Hello everybody. Um, thanks so much, Anna. Um, I do I need to do anything on my end? Do I need to? You're all good. Don't change anything, Anna. I'm all good. You're okay. All good. Cool. <laughs> um, I've still got you as a giant on my screen, but that's quite nice. Um, and it's lovely. It's lovely to see some familiar faces. I hi um, Nori and hi Lucy. Um, it's lovely to see you. Sorry if I'm missing anyone else. Um, okay, so I'll start. I'll start. I'll start properly now. Um, my name's Lucy Cathew. I am the author of Blood Moon, which um, somebody very kindly wrote in the comments. They had really enjoyed. You're my favourite person. <laughs> um, it's um, a novel in verse for young adults. Um, I've written about 30 children's books. I worked in children's publishing before I wrote. Um, I've written picture books, non-fiction, phonics books. Um, yeah, lots of different types of books. And Blood Moon is my debut novel. I also lecture in creative writing at the University of Bath Spa um, and uh, I'm occasionally an editor. <laughs> so that's me. Um, I'm going to talk through how um, I go about writing a verse novel and then at the end of um, the talk we'll have some questions and answers and then we will stop the recording and we will go into um, a little bit of a creative workshop so that people can, I'll set a little exercise, we can all do a little bit of writing and share it um, between us. So I am really looking forward to hearing some of your work if anybody feels like doing some live writing and sharing. Um, so I, I go about writing your first novel. <laughs> by firstly doing quite a lot of research. I, um, I've just written a second book um, which is looking at the impact of um, online porn um, on young people and so I started with quite a lot of non-fiction. This is Don't Hold My Head Down by Lucy Ann Holmes. Um, girls and Sex, Boys and Sex, an absolute heifer of a book, which is a brilliant um, bit of um, like, a, like a teacher's guide to doing sex education. Um, and I use those books as kind of my Bibles. And what I try to get out of um, nonfiction, I love reading nonfiction, is almost like a kind of statement that holds the book together. I mean, this is really nothing to do with writing in verse and more just writing anything, but a guiding principle, I'm sure lots of you have heard, of, like, I've heard them called different things, but I think a guiding principle can be really good for steering you and keeping you focused. And I think staying focused when you're writing a verse novel is probably one of the most important things because you don't have a lot of words to say it in. So every word needs to be really coming back to that guiding principle. Um, so for Blood Moon, there was a brilliant talk by Brene Brown. It was on Ted, um, it was her talk. And um, the quote was, shame cannot survive empathy. And that's really what I just kept coming back to. So what am I trying to do? So so when I was looking at what the online shit, because um, Blood Moon is about a girl who gets online shamed and when she gets her period during her first ever sexual experience. So I kept coming back to this idea. So if shame can't survive empathy, then the resolution is going to be empathy. So there needs to be a lack of empathy all the way through this opening section where I'm um, driving her further into this online shaming. Um, and with the book I've just written, I've got a quote from Peggy Orenstein, who wrote this amazing book, if anyone's interested in this subject. She is absolutely brilliant. And um, the quote for that is, objects don't object. So she's talking about the objectification of women and girls um, in online porn. And so I kind of <laughs> just write it in huge letters above my desk, and I'll often like have it kind of just knocking about in my head and just remember like that's the guiding principle okay and and sometimes it's not just one line that kind of guides it but anyway so that's what I do so I start with non-fiction books I also look at research papers campaigns that charities are running around the issue um 
lectures, TED Talks, as I mentioned, podcasts, I'm a big fan because you can kind of be doing something else and still feel like you're doing research. Um, and then I'll pull together lots of images on, um, on Pinterest and I also try to pull in pictures of people who look how I think the characters will look. So I'll make a kind of um, A3 page with them and I'll do them in a hierarchy. So I'll have like the two main characters at the top or the one main character and then along the bottom sub characters and then even smaller at the bottom kind of like your cast members um, the people who are kind of available for you so that while I'm working I can look and I can see them and I can hear their voices um, so that's I think that's a really um, I think that's a really useful way for me of cutting straight to what this person's like um, Okay, then most importantly, and I think this is the single most important thing, I will read lots of books, which are the type of book I think it would sit next to on a bookshelf. And I think, I, I know like, I know the people who are here will be doing this anyway. It's like, what, where do I want this book to end up? And so I do lots of research, I read loads of verse novels. Um, this one is just, absolutely beautiful I can see nodding heads um, it's about a girl who is a spoken word poet and Elizabeth Acevedo um, was a spoken word poet is a spoken word poet so I'd really recommend that um, but there are lots of different types of verse novels and I'm just going to kind of linger here for a minute and just look at the different types because I think it's quite a catch-all phrase for a type of book and it is you, you see a lot of verse novels for young adults. So I am really talking about young adult um, verse novels, but they are actually quite different. So um, this one is very um, aural to read it. It's quite, um, I think it's quite obvious that she's a spoken word poet and I think it would work really well read out loud. It's also quite varied on the page. The lines vary quite a lot in length and it's also quite structured, the forms that the poems take. Um, then you've got a book like The Girl and the Goddess by Nikita Gill. And this is a bit more autobiographical. And I'd say in a way it's almost more, um, it's more lyrical, it's more expansive, and it doesn't stay where the main character is. It drifts into um, mythology and um, the past, the present, it moves between different voices, um, all in a really enormously accomplished way. She, if you don't know her work, it's absolutely stunning. Um, it's also got quite a lot of art throughout it, which is a lovely, a lovely thing. And if you know Rupi Kaur's poetry, she does that as well. Um, she illustrates her poems, although she doesn't write for this novel. Um, then you've got um, a book like Long Way Down, which is really structured and it's very spare and very effective in its spareness. There are often just 10 or so words on a page like this. Um, this book takes place over six floors on an elevator and each floor a new ghost comes in. And with each ghost, the story deepens as the main character weighs up whether he is going to avenge the murder of his brother. So the structure of the ghosts and the structure of the um, elevators kind of lends itself to the way that the, the poetry is laid out on each page. Um, and I think that is, the, the thing about verse novels, there's not really hard and fast rules about what you can and can't do. If you if you are thinking about writing verse, Ellen Hopkins would be a good person to look at as well. She does a lot of like shape poems and um, kind of clever poems where if you read if you read the two lines together, it means one thing, but then if you read every other line, it means something different. She's got she's got a book I can't remember what it's called. Um, 
where there are um, twin girls narrating it. And there's lots of text play like that. And then sometimes the text slide apart, almost like that kind of thing where you get to um, pictures and then they'll slide apart and you'll see them kind of playing in a different way. So there's lots of ways you can play with that sort of stuff. Um, and then another one that I think is absolutely brilliant is um, the Black Flamingo. And this brings in a lot of different poetic forms as well. So, he, so it's got quite a lot graphically going on inside. I'll just try and find a nice page for you. So it kind of uses the layout. And some of that would be the publisher's choice. And some of it is obviously the author's choice. Um, and it's got quite a lot of dialogue in as well, actually. Um, just try to find another bit. Yeah, so it's got, it's got sections of text. It's got sections of um, scripture, I think that is, yeah. Um, and other voices coming in. So those are all things you can think about um, when you're writing in verse. So now on to um, the way that I start. And this is what we'll, we can, you can be thinking about. Um, I start with the voice of a character. And I think about what does their voice sound like? Um, not necessarily like their voice as in the narrative voice, but what does their actual spoken voice sound like? What do they sound like when they're talking to their friends? Do they have an accent? What sort of language do they use? What sorts of things fall into their frame of reference? And how would they describe things? So what kinds of words would they use? And I think all of that comes with the accent for me. So I think a lot about how they how they would sound. And um, what has worked quite well for me is having almost like a um, like a statement piece that is a, a, a way to get into their voice. You know, sometimes people say if you're talking in an accent, there's like a phrase that gets you into that accent, like um, I actually can't think of any, like, what do people do when they're doing a Welsh accent? Um, it might be like a little phrase. Oh yeah, if you were going to do like um, Nessa from um, Gavin and Stacey, you might go like, oh, and then you start to get her voice because that's how she speaks. Um, so I almost do that and I have a sound in my head. Um, and then I start to think about a rhythm. And that rhythm for me works a bit like train tracks, laying down in front of me the rhythm so that I am not thinking too much while I'm writing. I'm not trying to kind of um, guess what needs to come next. I try and just keep that rhythm going while I'm typing. And I think, um, I know Marissa said that in her um, talk with you, Anna, that she um, tries to just get a draft out and I do definitely do that but I'm somewhere between kind of just vomiting up a draft and keeping it careful I I think if I write too much that isn't correct I actually find that quite um labor intensive to come back and edit I would rather put down on the page what I think is right so if I get lost if I don't think something's right, I actually just will li literally just delete. I'll just highlight the whole lot and delete it um, if I've gone the wrong way and I'll come back. Um, and that's how I'll get to the end of a draft. Um, so that rhythm is the thing that will keep me going. And then I suppose in a verse novel and it's true in poetry and it's true in song, when you want to do something um, like there's a change in status for a character if something dramatic happens, I will switch up the rhythm. So I'll, I'll kind of consciously retune into something different. So most of the time I'm writing in to tum 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 to tum. That's the rhythm I'm hearing. But if something different is happening, I will consciously think about what rhythm I want it to sound like if it's kind of stopping or uncomfortable or if it's more flowing. Um, and with that, I will think about two big questions to drive the story. What does this character want and what do they need? And I think that's true of all stories. 
Um, the other thing I use, and um, I think it, I think it is probably um, applicable to, and while I think it's really important in verse, is what shape the story is going to take. So I'm going to come to now how I get the story into a shape when I'm writing in bits of verse that don't necessarily sort of follow a chronological sequence. So sometimes a, a bit of the story kind of will crop up and it will have a particular poetic form and it needs to be on its own as a poem. It doesn't slot in between a more narrative style poem. Um, and so, so I'll think about story shape and I'll know which story shape I'm going to use. So I tend to use, I think it's the Cinderella arc. I like that shape of story. Um, and if you don't know what I'm talking about, you can just Google Kurt Vonnegut story arcs. I'm sure everybody does know what I'm talking about. Um, so what I do, once I've written the first draft, I literally print it out and cut it up into little pieces. And I have got a picture of it in my presentation, Anna. I don't know whether you've got that and you can share it. Um, I wasn't able to make my Zoom share it area. Oh, thank you. That's brilliant. So I literally <laughs> print it out. I print it out so that you've got um, like four, four pages on a piece of A4. So it's quite small. And then I staple each poem together. And then I, as you can see here in the picture, there's three rows, first act, second act, third act. And I put them into little sequences. So I'll stack them on top of each other. So on the top left there, you can see there's like three stacks together. Um, no, I can probably, no, I can't even do that. Um, yeah, so I'll stack them together so that I can actually um, arrange little sequences that go together as plot together. And then once I've got them all in order, I'll stack them up and then I'll sit at my desk and I'll rearrange what's in my Word document to match what's there. And I have tried doing it in Scrivener, but I just don't really like Scrivener. But I think if you did, if you are able to work in Scrivener, it would work really well for doing that because obviously you can just drag files around and move them. Um, but anyway, I stick with Word grudgingly and um, and I'll get them into a shape. And really, that's the first thing I'll do for the editing. So once I've got to the end of a first draft and then I find it easier to see when everything's laid out like that. And actually last time I did it, I ended up having to put a trestle table up because I needed a bit more space to work on or I ended up using the floor as well. But what really works for me is that I can see where it's very fat and there's too much going on. Um, there's too much writing, it's gonna slow the pace down. Um, so I'll kind of weed it out, take out poems that maybe I wrote when I needed to get into the voice, but actually I realise now are indulgent and the, they're not needed for the reader. Um, I'll also look at the main themes where they're cropping up and um, then um, I'll stack them into order, like I said, and I'll take them into Word and literally kind of rearrange it basically making sure that I'm sticking to that story arc. So making sure that I haven't got a kind of huge middle bit where nothing's happening. Um, next slide, please. <laughs> Thanks, Anna. Um, okay, so yeah, that's what I'm talking about now. So then I go through looking at pace. I think in a verse novel, one of the things that this form lends itself to is that it is a fast read there's no getting around that and so I think you want to um, use that to your advantage give it a sense of pace and um, you obviously get books which take place over a long period of time this one's definitely got that going for it um, that's the girl and the goddess by Nikita Gill again um, so that takes it place over a long period of time and that gives you time to kind of mull on the poetry it's it's almost like having a long soak in beautiful words. So that's that's one way you can definitely do it. Um, I like the way that you can read a verse novel like a film, just 
all through in one go. So that's what I'm always thinking about, whether the pace is still going, whether the rhythm is still going. And anything that is a bit indulgent or boring um, or even pointless, I just I just take it out. Even if I loved it, I just murder the darlings. Um, OK, so now layout. Um, I think this is one of the most fun things about writing a verse novel, which is that you can really play around so much. I've already talked about this a little bit. You can play around so much with the layout. Um, I, I, in this book, because um, the main character gets shamed online, I wanted to use both sides of the page like you get in a WhatsApp chat um, or, or any kind of messaging. So um, the main character's words, I have them over here. And then in places, I took it away so that there was nothing on the right hand side where she wasn't saying anything and other people were obviously I can't find an example now um, and I think um, I've seen another another book which is really nicely laid out by Yasmin Rahman and um, all the things we never said so that's three voices and I've lent my copy to someone so I can't show you but one of the voices is written in verse and she really kind of explodes the text it's huge and messy on some pages where she's um, feeling really angry or out of control um, and you can also look at actual like um, kind of established poetic forms like maybe a sonnet um, in an unexpected place or um, a um, a villanelle that's that's an ambition of mine to write a villanelle I haven't quite got there yet um so i think about how it looks on the page and that's probably the last thing i do sometimes as i'm going i will think about okay i could oh yeah like an idea sort of occurs to me and i kind of roughly do it but i try not to spend too much time fiddling around with that because i think you could really waste a lot of time um with the layout and that is different for all authors. I've heard Sarah Crossan say that um, she doesn't do any of the layout stuff. She does sits with her editor and does that. Um, but I I like to I like to lay it out how I'm thinking about it because it kind of helps me in the editing process. So now I have reached the end of my presentation and how I go about writing a verse novel. Um, I would um be very happy to answer any questions that people might have um and oh, somebody said that they enjoyed reading. i'm going to give people a chance to um pop their questions in the chat just um while they're doing that i've got a couple of my own <laughs> okay good just because i'm like hey i'll ask my questions and um, so how did you like this is a question i love to write ask everyone but how did you get into writing and kind of particularly into writing verse novels like where did that come from um i think i um wrote I'm, I'm dyslexic and um i like reading poetry because i really like how it looks on the page i like the white space i find it easier to follow and i've always really loved poetry um so like one of my favorite books is um was under the bed by michael rosen which i had when i was really little um, and off the back of that, I wrote my own poetry collection and really hilarious felt it drawings and sewed it together. Um, but then I moved away from that actually. Um, and I was writing in prose and then I was doing the MA at Bath Spa in writing for young people. And my tutor, Jo Nadin said, I'd written a bit in verse and she was like, why aren't you doing this? Do this. <laughs> Kind of go with it and so and and actually once I embraced it I realized that I find it a lot easier to write if I'm hearing it um so I think that was I think that's a really important part of um kind of finding where you are as a writer is finding your own process you know it's like what whatever it takes for you to get the words on the page and everybody's got something different that is like their nemesis or gets in the way of writing or you know makes it difficult for them to um get get it down i know that's a common problem so yeah that was that was how i got into it it's funny isn't it how 
like for, like you said like you really struggle with Scrivener but some people like swear by it and it's the thing that they definitely would always use and um like it's funny isn't it that like writing a book you end up with the same kind of vague product but actually the way that we get there is so completely different yeah it's really cool and um, one more question for me um uh, which is like what in terms of working with the agent and publisher how much difference is there from the thing that you handed in initially to what ends up on the page like how much editing and working collaboratively is there um it was really interesting because i was nervous as a editor how it would be to work with an editor on a verse novel but actually it was just basically the same as working on a piece of prose most of their comments my my agent's comments were fairly kind of limited and like let's sort this out and some kind of line stuff but my editor's comments were kind of um more in the vein of like structural things to go back and look at um there was one um very bleak day where we changed the plot quite a lot and we were just trying to sort out a really like gnarly little plot issue and i had three editors on this and one of them came back and said um hang on i'll just open the dark box in my heart where the comments stood um (laughs) um, said yeah i think the plot works but the poetry's not very good. <laughs> I was like, God. <laughs> I do think that I do think that is difficult. I do think that's difficult when you're trying to do plot and maintain some level of beauty because you can't just whip out like in fact some really annoying things in the editing were that I changed one thing that a character did. Um and a word that she used and then I went through again and I had to edit the whole book because I had used that word to rhyme with Mm. it was almost like a little motif and I hadn't done it particularly consciously um and then of course once it came out the whole thing went and then there were suddenly bits I was like what is this this for (laughs) um so that was a real but I mean it was a real joy to do it apart from that dark day (laughs) <laughs> apart from that day well we've got um, a load of questions come in um, from different people so um emma has asked um when querying a verse novel um do agents generally like to see like a a, a sort of a certain type of formatting and um, would what how would it compare in terms of like to a normal prose submission yeah um, i i would say if you're submitting verse to an agent um send think about equivalence so when you query an agent, they often ask for um, three chapters or 50 pages. So if they ask for 50 pages of verse, if they ask for three chapters, maybe send like the first 10% if your book is, you know, about this long. And um, yeah, you could you could think about the number of pages that three chapters would be on or or cut it at a point where it's sort of the opening phase because you should have quite a good sense of what that you know the first three chapters are really like where is the story happening who is this and what's going to happen setting up the expectation of the voice and all of that so so that's really what you want to send like a kind of snippet like that but no um agents that i sent it to were in the least bit phased by it being in verse that was a big worry for me whether that would actually be um, off-putting, mm. um, <laughs> whether that would be off-putting for agents, but no, not, not no one um, came back and said, "Oh, we'd like it," but if it was in prose, mm. and no one came back and said, "Oh, you've sent fifteen pages; we expected twenty Or yeah, <laughs> it's not a big thing to worry about. <laughs> no, it's really not. It's really not. I think you know what they want to see is they want to see what what your voice sounds like and that's it really they want to see whether it's a fresh piece of writing that's exciting so just send a, a representative sample yeah oh brilliant thank you um so lucy's asked um can you tell any, us anything about the structural style of your new novel is it different to blood moon um I, that's a good question lucy i um I really didn't want to write the same story again. And 
people say that that's what authors do that you're just telling the same story again and again and i did notice the same beats coming up the same sort of like oh yeah that's that bit oh that's that bit um and in the end i just embraced it because it isn't the same story at all it's about very different things different setting different characters um but i think like it's just how it comes out the form that it comes out in um so I did go with um, a three act structure again, actually. I really like a three act structure. It arguably three and five is the same and I can see where the five acts are, but I just arrange them as three because I, I like to kind of blur that third one and the first one as well. So yeah. Nice, very exciting. I'm looking forward to reading it. <laughs> oh, me too. <laughs> <laughs> So, so Emma's asked, um, is there any funny verse novels that you know of? So like maybe in the style of like Louise Renison? Oh, obviously, bloody oh, hilarious. Um, <laughs> Laugh a minute. Uh, that, that, that is a really good question. God, wouldn't that be great? Mm. Louise Renison. I don't actually think there are. Right one. Who has I'm that? Just, um, Emma, yeah, I'm just trying to think, like, because I know, like, um, Black Flamingo has sort of moments of humour, doesn't it? Um, yeah, it does, and I think, um, yeah, they've all got, I can see that there's moments of comedy in all of them. I don't think any of them are, like, I suppose the thing about poetry is it is in, in kind of raw poetry, if you like, <laughs> as opposed to the poetry in a verse novel. Raw poetry is really like a condensed form and a really tight and whittled down way of saying something that's quite difficult to say. You often get like really profound poems about death and about, so I, yeah, about kind of the human condition, which, which maybe poetry lends itself to because it has the ability to kind of elevate something that's difficult to talk about. In fact, I think it's why there are so many verse novels for young adults because mm. young adult literature is um, this kind of coming of age as, as a form for an audience who are experiencing firsts of all these huge and tumultuous events in their life. And I think a verse novel can deal with that really well. I'm just looking at the crossover on my shelf by Kwame Alexander. That, mm. That's got moments of real humour that made me laugh but then it's also about like the death of a parent so it's also incredibly profound yeah mm. it's it's like you say it's it's hard with that like mm. with poetry trying to yeah I think you definitely could do, I don't even, um I think there's some adult ones that are funny so is it Bill Bryson has written oh, I, I might have got the name wrong but someone's written I feel like it's the come from the same agency as you chum but um they've written like an adult verse novel that's all like funny little poems um I haven't actually I'm read it but that's how it's marketed <laughs> yeah. um but I'm not sure for young adult I'm just looking at this which is a really funny mm. um young adult novel and um Bidka did there is verse in here. There are like chunks of verse, but they're all and they and it is funny and it's very Louise Renison. That's why I'm thinking mm. of it. Yeah. Um, and there are chunks of it that she's done poetry. Like there's a bit where the main character writes like a love poem for the girl that she's in love with using a cookery book. I can't find it, but it's very funny and it works really well. But I would she'd write mm. a great verse novel, wouldn't she? I'll get, she, I'll she get definitely answer would. That one. That's <laughs> Let's make her. <laughs> um, now, Rosie asked, um, how did you learn the rules of poetry? Uh, the secret. <laughs> yeah, no one's allowed to. No one's allowed to know. I don't. I see. This is this is a this is a thorny one because there are there are like there are snobs within poetry. There are snobs within all literature, but poetry seems to attract a particularly snobby type of snob. And um, <laughs> I don't know, you know, there are there are some poems which do incredibly clever things with literary devices, with rhetoric, with structure, with form, with 
internal rhymes and assonance and alliteration and all of those things. And those are all ingredients that you can take and put in your work, but also everybody can write poetry. It doesn't mean it'll be good poetry, obviously, but everybody can write poetry. And I don't think, I don't think getting hung up on the rules too much is particularly helpful. What I would say is read poetry because your work is going to be in conversation with the your contemporaries and if you don't read widely in amongst the um people that your book is talking with it just isn't it's like walking into a room and just shouting when everyone else is having a conversation or it or walking into a room and whispering and just being irrelevant you know i think that's how you learn the rules of poetry <laughs> Is that okay as an answer I I, yeah, I think it's a good answer <laughs> I think it's sometimes it's really easy when you feel like you're standing on the outside of a room to think that there's lots of like rules and regulations to get in there yeah and, and some people can make you feel that way here's something that that question made me think of so um on my like um uh with Walker we did like a training day in learning how to um sorry Walker's my publisher when we were learning how to like give um, school talks and stuff. And um, Joseph Elliott, who wrote the Good Hawk, um, um, did buy all my other books. <laughs> <laughs> wrote the Good Hawk, which is a young adult novel in prose. Um, he was on the call, he was on the same day with me and we were chatting and he was saying, um, oh, I used to write poetry, I used to love it, like, but how did you do it? How did you write it? And like, I don't, I, where do I learn all of this? And I was like, just write, just do it. <laughs> and, and he told me that off the back of that, he did go and write some poetry and it's just been published in Pop Shot, which is a poetry journal. So I think like you've got to, if you can write, you've got to do it. Brilliant. Great answer. Um, is there a typical word count, Emma's asked, um, mm. when you aim for writing a novel in verse? Yeah, I, I, mine I'm looking at around 28 to 32,000 words. Mm -hmm. I think um, Louisa Reed, who's another verse novelist, hers is, this is about 30,000 words as well. Brilliant. If you're looking for a, another verse novelist, is written in dual voice. Um, I would guess that the long way down I would have a guess that, that is about 20,000 words maybe mm -hmm. every single one of them <laughs> needed to be there and there is not not a spare bit brilliant thank you I feel like we've got lots of M's and Emma's but an M has asked um, <laughs> um she said well firstly that she's really glad to hear you speak about it um but what would you say is the main difference for you between writing in poetry um writing poetry sorry and or writing a verse novel mm, like what's that. the kind of difference and do you need yeah. more or less plots like kind of events that happen yeah I, I think the difference is that you're telling a story that cannot be told in one poem and um, but I would love to read a verse novel that is one poem. I would love that. Wouldn't that be amazing? Like some kind of, I mean, I don't, I suppose what would make it one poem, you know, because it's, you're always going to have broken lines and stuff. Um, I think the difference is that when you're writing a verse novel, you're writing a novel. That's your, that's the thing that you're first and foremost doing is telling a story that needs to be told in a novel so it kind of obeys all the rules of the form of a novel in the sense of having a clear opening um central characters character development um the character needs to change over the course of the novel or if the character doesn't change over the course of the novel that's the kind of story like sort of um i'm trying to think there is a famous example fallen from my mind yeah so I think I think that's the main thing and you're doing it through the form of verse mm. I like it yeah and um, I think you can use you can use the fact that you're writing in poems so to speak to come to zoom in and out you mm. can have like I think of them as like narrative poems so I have some that are 
like where I'm trying to get something done. I have some poems that are more dialogue based, so they're kind of conversation poems. So I'll make sure something's happening, mm. like the characters are walking or um, there's like some kind of physical thing to see, but it's mainly dialogue, it's a transactional kind of poem. Or you have like a reflection poem, which is just like um, a little dense moment of looking at close up at something I like or a list poem, maybe something like that mm. to, to express something. So you've got different ways of telling the story. But I think overall, everything needs to be progressing the story. And kind of leading on from that, um, Marisa has asked, um, like, how do you approach plotting? So did you write out the story before you put it into verse? No, I didn't. <laughs> no. Um, I thought of it in verse. And um, then I had to find the story to write a synopsis. Um, and then I could see it a bit more clearly, but no, I didn't write it first. I thought about it in in verse. And in fact, actually thinking about it in verse kind of helped me to discover little bits of story that I hadn't thought about that would take it in a particular direction. And so, yeah, I don't, but I don't um, plan, but I know that Marissa is a great planner. <laughs> She's very jealous. Yeah. The gospel of planning yeah. according to marisa <laughs> gospel I love it. stuff that makes no sense <laughs> <laughs> i like it <laughs> um, so like um one final question um from rosie uh, she just asked I, I know you've given loads of recommendations um so is there any other like poetry collections that you recommend that are useful when you're sort of thinking of writing in verse well i really do think it depends on what you're writing about Mm -hmm. and who you're writing for because around every single one of those whatever it is if you're writing about the body or if you're writing about um you know uh death there's like a whole horde of poetry around it so um i don't know if i would recommend a particular oh i know what i was going to recommend though this book is brilliant Kate Clanchy, um, and it, sorry, it's called a bit of a sheen on it. Um, <laughs> it is, it is a very thorough book with absolutely loads of exercises and poems and different activities you can do and ways to think about writing poetry. And it's more sort of talking about poetry kind of in its own sort of solitary form rather than narrative poetry but I think a lot of it applies really well oh brilliant thank yeah. you that's a really good recommendation um so thank you so much for um speaking to us all about that it's so like helpful to hear about how you um write your verse novels it's my pleasure thank you for having me